Tempest Keep DI is located in Netherstorm in Outland. There are three buildings that you can enter, you'll want to enter the middle one. I do this run in my retribution spec with an item level of 467. The main reason for soloing this raid is the Phoenix Mount that can drop from Kelfast Sunstrider. Ashes of Alar has a drop rate of around 1%, but it only takes around 15 minutes each week to give it a try. You won't need a lot of tactics at level 90, but I'll tell you what I know. Make your way to the top chamber, kill everything in your path. You can use one of the big birds in the first room to give you a little boost while walking to Kelfast's, and I cleared his room, but you might not have to. He likes to talk, so echo him before you're done clearing, so you don't have to wait that long. Kelfast Sunstrider his fight comes in 5 phases. In phase 1 you'll fight his generals one by one, and I'll tell you about their abilities. Feladred the Darkner places a rend on you which is a stacking dot. He also silences, does a knockback and walks very slow. Kite him around if the damage is too high. Lord Sanguinar fears. Caper Nian uses an arcane burst which slows you and knocks you back. She will only do this when you're in melee range, so attack from afar if you have to. She places conflagration on you which disorientates and she can also cause fireballs. You can use Hand of Freedom to remove the slowing effect. Master Engineer Telonicus throws bombs and places a debuff on you. The debuff stuns you every so often and can get really annoying, bubble to remove it. Phase 2 begins once the generals are defeated. Kelfas will now summon a group of weapons to fight you. Take out the Cosmic Infuser first, since that one will heal the rest of them. After that just DPS what you want. You used to need these weapons in order to survive the next phases, but now you won't have to. Phase 3 begins 2 minutes after he has summoned his weapons, so you might have to wait a little while. In phase 3 you'll fight all the generals at the same time. They use the same abilities, so I chose to kill Caper Nian first. You could also choose to kill the engineer first to reduce the chance of receiving his debuff, but it's entirely up to you. I wanted to save my bubble for Kelfas, but the stun was just too annoying to ignore. Three minutes after the start of phase 3, Kelfas himself enters the fight, starting phase 4. He casts fireballs which you can interrupt, 
a patch on the floor which you need to move out of, and he uses arcane disruption which will disorientate you for 8 seconds. A trinket or every man for himself will remove the effect. He can also summon a phoenix after 30 to 40 seconds. The phoenix will return to his egg form once you kill it. Make sure to destroy the egg or the phoenix will respawn. After 60 seconds Kalfos will shield himself, disorientate you and he will start to cast 3 uninterruptible pyroblasts. You should be able to push him into phase 5 before that time. Phase 5 begins when he reaches 50% health. He once again casts fireballs, but he will also remove the gravity. Flow to him and keep on DPSing. Don't touch the clouds around him, since that will place a debuff on you that reduces your maximum health by 10% and this affects stacks. Nether beams will deal damage to you and might actually kill you with enough debuffs. Pop your cooldowns to kill him as quickly as possible. That's all there is to it guys, good luck and I hope that the mount will drop for you. You can also do the other bosses, but that was already possible at 85, even Kelfos Sunstrider was possible at 85. I just was never able to solo him as easy as it is now. I'll tell you about the other bosses, what you might need to know, but they're very very easy. The first boss Alar is located in the first room and he comes in two phases. In phase 1 he will fly around the platforms and summon adds. He can also cast a debuff on you if no one is melee range. DPS him down until he dies, then quickly jump down. And now he will spawn in the middle of the room and anyone near him will receive a knockback. Wait until he spawned, engage him and quickly finish him off. Move out of the fire and should he fly up, run around the room and wait for two adds to spawn. Ignore the adds, focus your DPS on Alar and finish him off. Void Reaver is located in the blue room on the left side. You can clear the trash before engaging him, but it's not required. He shoots an arcane bomb at you with silences. You can avoid it by running away, but once again it really isn't required. Because of the silence you'll be left with 4 abilities, which are Judgment, Crusader Strike, Divine Storm and Templar's Verdict. I bubble to remove the silence and switch to my Seal of Truth. High Astromancer Solarian is located in the purple room on the right side. You will have to clear two ads before you engage her and you'll see two patrolling packs in the room. The big ads in those patrolling packs are the ones that will mind control you but you can kill them before they do. Kill the ads, engage the boss and pull her to the hallway. You pull her to the hallway because she places a debuff on you that will toss you into the air and by having the roof over your head it will reduce the fall damage. Ads will spawn, just AoE them down, DPS the boss until 20%.
At 20% her true form comes out. At that time you'll want to pull her out of the hallway because she can fear you. If she fears you, she might fear you too far away and this will reset the encounter. Finish her off and that's all there is to it to this entire instance. I hope the guide was helpful. I hope you will get whatever you want out of the instance. And until next time guys, see ya!